So, sometime last year, my dad was cleaning out a box back home, and he found a newsletter I used to write when I was 11. I completely forgot that I used to do this, but every Sunday after church, I would sell this newsletter for a dollar. And I remember the first time I started it, I was deathly afraid that no one would buy any, so I made 10 copies to keep it safe. But I actually sold out, so the next Sunday, I did what any other 11-year-old would do. I made more copies, and I increased my prices because who doesn't want to make money off of their side hustle? <laughs> In the particular newsletter that my dad wrote, that my dad found, I wrote about what I wanted to be when I grew up. I wrote that I wanted to be a lawyer, a CEO, a multimillionaire, and president of the United States. I know. I don't know what I was thinking, but honestly, I think 11-year-old me would be proud that she wasn't far off the mark. I'm currently a second-year student at the University of Houston Law Center. <laughs> and I'm also the co-founder of Blatomy, an online platform where black millennials come to learn new skills, land better jobs, and reach their full potential. This summer, I'll be working at one of the largest tech law firms in the world and spending some time at Google. You might think that I'm passionate about law, tech, and business, which is why the things that I'm doing would make sense. It's true that I want to impact those areas to some degree, but I'm actually more focused on my purpose. You see, many people think that passion and purpose are the same thing, but what if they're not? Passion is a beautiful thing because it helps us to serve people in unique ways, and sometimes we can't do great things without it. But passion is not purpose. And although there's nothing wrong with having passions or with being passionate, there is something problematic about this popular idea, follow your passion. We hear it all the time. It's in TV shows, podcasts, interviews, and articles. Society is constantly telling us to follow our passion, to be happy, to get what we want out of life, and to be successful. But the problem with this idea of following your passion is that it doesn't give a full or realistic picture of how to live a truly fulfilling life, especially when life doesn't go as planned, which sadly is a lot of the time. I have a childhood friend back home who lost her dad right before we became teenagers. I still remember him, and he was such a sweet man, but her life was never the same after that. She had to grow up fast and mature quickly to help her mom take care of her younger siblings. A couple years ago, I found out that her mom was diagnosed with cancer, and my childhood friend basically dropped out of school to become the head of her own household. She hasn't lived out her adolescence or her adulthood in a way that most people have. It wouldn't make any sense for me to tell her to follow her passion because she has immediate responsibilities that don't give her the privilege of pursuing those passions right now. It's like me telling her to buy a new car while her house is on fire. Yeah, that would be terrible advice. But in spite of her circumstances, I know that I can encourage her to continue walking in her purpose because I believe that her purpose is so much bigger than her. Right now, she's chosen to help her family, and I know in the future she will also choose to help many more people too. So if passion isn't the same thing as purpose, what exactly is passion? Google defines passion as an intense desire or enthusiasm for something. You can be passionate about the arts and creativity or educating minority students in low-income neighborhoods or even have a passion for tacos, like me, because <laughs> this is Houston, Texas, and I'm not ashamed to say that I'm very, very passionate about tacos. Society, on the other hand, defines passion as this thing that's going to help you get over there. It's this thing that's going to help you reach greatness and success and happiness. That's why it's such a common piece of advice today. The reality is that our passions come and go. They wax and they wane, depending on the season of life that we're in. And sometimes our passions can just be selfish. Not to mention, I don't think society talks enough about how following your passion is a privilege. Not many people have the time, the opportunity, or, or the money to follow their passion fully. 
You may have some doubts about the way that I'm framing passion because maybe you've assumed that every great and successful person that our culture adores got to where they are today because they were passionate about their craft. But I beg to differ. What makes a person great is not an intense pursuit of passion alone. What makes a person great is their selfless pursuit of true purpose. Let's explore this idea of purpose a bit more. Google defines purpose as a person's resolve or determination to do something. And I define purpose as a pursuit that seeks not only to enrich a person and their inner circle, but also seeks to enrich the lives of the people a person comes in contact with every single day. If you want to live a truly fulfilling life, a life with impact, a life that makes you content at the end of every day, you have to choose to live your life in a way that also enriches other people. This is true purpose. Don't be mistaken. True purpose isn't something you just find or you stumble upon in 20 years. True purpose is thinking about the person you want to be 20 years from now or the life you want to have lived by the time you're 80 and finding a way to start walking that vision right now. I've come to this realization about true purpose because I'm in a world where external perception, approval, predestined standards all matter and sort of define your purpose. In law school, one of the most important things you can do as a student is to join a journal, especially the law review, which is the most prestigious of the journals. Many employers and judges look for this on a student's resume, and some don't even give you the time of day if it's not on there. Naturally, after my first year of law school, I seriously considered joining a journal because that was the expectation, even though I knew I didn't really want to do one. Plus, my grades weren't good enough to get onto law review. But I spoke to some upperclassmen and some attorneys about the conflict that I was having, and all but two of them strongly advised me to join a journal for two main reasons. One reason was that it would help me during recruiting season at the end of the summer. And the second reason was that I didn't know where my career was going to go as an attorney, but having journal on my resume would sort of open doors for me down the line and secure some sort of future success. And I'm not here to bash journal or anyone who's joined one, but that reasoning just wasn't compelling for me. I didn't understand why having a journal on my resume was the standard by which to measure my success as a law student or my future as an attorney. I didn't understand why there weren't other ways for me to get great job opportunities and show my employer's value regardless of what was on my resume. I didn't understand why this was the standard. I wanted to do something that was fulfilling, something that was bigger than me, and not just for the sake of checking off a box. I wanted to do something that would allow me to help people walk in their own true purpose. And for me, that was blatomy. For a long time, I actually thought that I was the only one who felt this way. I thought that I was the only one who wanted more than what a successful career or a good reputation could get me. But after talking to some people, I found out that I'm not the only one who longs for more than what society has offered us. Deep down inside, we all do. We are all looking for our true purpose. Simply put, I've discovered that my true purpose is to be a light. I want people to come in contact with me and leave with something new, whether that's a laugh, a smile, or maybe a next step. I don't have to be well known. I don't have to be perfect or have a large following to do this. And I'm not saying that I walk around school with like a fake smile plastered on my face, like, hey guys, this is me, I'm walking in my true purpose, you know, the smile's for you. <laughs> like, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about being more cognizant that in the midst of my daily schedule, my daily plans, there are other people who are walking on their own journeys through life, and I can leave a seed on their own way. I used to think that this is what I wanted, and I used to think that I was the only one who wanted this thing, but I'm honestly not. And I'm not the, I can't control all the things that happen in my life, of course, but I can make the choice to be a light and to impact people regardless of what happens. Brian Stevenson is a public interest lawyer who graduated from Harvard Law 
and he's argued and won several cases before the Supreme Court. He and his staff have won more than 135 reversals and reliefs for wrongly condemned prisoners on death row. He has at least 40 honorary doctoral degrees and several other awards for his work with the Equal Justice Initiative. I always wondered what drove Brian Stevenson from Cambridge, Massachusetts to Montgomery, Alabama to work with inmates and to deal with racism and discrimination and pushback. Was it just passion? Was it just this deep desire for success? Well, when he was asked in an interview about why he does his work and how he copes with the realities of his work, he said this, and I quote, I can't say that the work isn't hard. It can at times be really overwhelming. But it's liberating to be purpose-driven, to be pulled by a belief that there is something better waiting for us, and to be encouraged by a community of people who've come before me and found ways to stand when others said, sit down. I'm not saying we all need to go to law school and become civil rights attorneys. But if you want to go to law school, let me know. I might be able to help you with something. <laughs> know a little bit about the L side. But what if we all took a moment to stop and to just think about the ways that we could enrich other people outside of ourselves? I wonder if we would be as concerned with the resumes, the accolades, the followers, and all these things that get people's attention, the things that we define our purpose by, and the things we assume our passions will lead us to. Look, I'm 22. There is a lot about myself that I am still figuring out. So you can trust that I'm in this boat with you trying to understand how to live a life that is worth living. When I was 11 and writing down all those things that I wanted to be in the newsletter, I thought that my true purpose was in my career. The bigger, the better. What 11-year-old doesn't want to be president? What I've come to realize now is that law, tech, business, making tacos, all of my other passions and interests are merely avenues for me to walk in my true purpose to help others. And as I've learned more about life, I've just seen how fleeting life is, here today and it's gone tomorrow. That's why this talk is actually my invitation to you to explore three things. One, passion is not purpose. Two, Purpose should be our focus. And three, our successes and passions aren't just for our personal portfolios. These things are actually avenues for us to walk in our true purpose to help others. Passion alone will leave you restless. But walking in your true purpose will fulfill you in ways that you never thought were possible. Thank you. <laughs>